Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Mike from the Bureau News and the currently down someonesbones.com, though I do expect to have the website back up on the 22nd or the 23rd. Not sure which yet, but it will be efforted as soon as possible. I have a short article I want to read today. No video. So I just have an image up on the screen while I go ahead and read the article. I'm going to add a few comments as well as talk about one other little thing I noticed going on in the news today and then close it out. Title of the article I want to read today, Military Preps for Nibiru Threat Analysis Mission. And I am going to read. The United States Air Force is preparing its mysterious X-37B orbital test vehicle for yet another classified, taxpayer-funded safari into the unknown. Since its inception, the X-37B has been shrouded in secrecy. The government has repeatedly denied information requests submitted through the Freedom of Information Act, citing national security as a primary reason for withholding technical and operational details. Because of the government's silence on the X-37B, Many people have speculated the vehicle is either an advanced spaced weapon or a spy satellite. Our source, however, told a different story. A Boeing Phantom Works engineer who worked on the X-37B, speaking under condition of anonymity, said the space frame, while capable of filling multiple roles, was funded, designed, and developed for a single purpose to gather critical intelligence on a brown dwarf star hurtling toward Earth from the vastness of space. On its last mission, the X-37B spent a whopping 675 days in orbit, collecting, processing, and scrutinizing terabytes of Nibiru data. That mission, which from launch to landing cost an estimated $600 million dollars, yielded inconclusive results. The military and its scientists almost immediately realized subsequent missions would be needed to substantiate the Nibiru system's precise orbit, composition, and threat analysis. I quote our source, Without these facts, everything is just guesswork, pure speculation. I and a handful of other engineers had very little knowledge of mission specifics. Everything is highly compartmentalized. Design Team 1 has no idea what Design Team 2 works on and vice versa. But we were told about the threat and the need to design an unmanned space frame able to survive in orbit for extended periods of time. The September launch, they hope, will fill information voids." End quote. Strapped to the fuselage of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, that X-37B liftoff will occur during the first week of September, weather permitting. The orbiter, our source said, houses an improved sensor suite, cutting-edge computers with redundant processors, and a redesigned retractable infrared telescope stored in the equipment bay. He says the platform has been outfitted for a 60-70 to 70 day journey, suggesting that technological advancements have minimized time required to collect needed data or time is simply running short and the military is desperate to learn what it can while it can. Nibiru's unpredictable elliptical orbit, he says, demands constant reevaluation of all available evidence. And even with mountains of anecdotal and statistical data, NASA and the military have been unable to accurately predict when the Bureau will arrive or gauge what damage the Dark Star will leave in its wake. I quote him again. NASA and military brass have butted heads over Nibiru projections. From what I've heard, some NASA officials believe Nibiru won't even arrive until much later in this century, while the military, judging by its actions, anticipates a much sooner arrival date. Forget about protecting you and me. If they cannot decide when it will be here, they aren't even sure they can protect themselves. They're hoping this X-37B launch resolves that issue 
and bring unity back between themselves and the NASA people. End quote. If all information is accurate, the military is ramping up efforts while NASA cruises along nonchalantly. Unfortunately, their inability to function as a cohesive unit will probably hinder attempts to produce reliable information. Not that they'd share it with us anyway. Only together, you and me, as concerned persons, can we piece together this puzzle whose pieces have long remained hidden. And that concludes the article I wanted to read today. And... Bear with me for just a second. I had hoped I had this web page ready I wanted to bring up here before I close this out, but I failed in that. So give me just a moment and I'm going to bring it up. And I hope, and I'm at a, at a loss to explain what this is, but this is really interesting. All right, let me go ahead and see if I can get this up here before I bore you all to death now. And just to mention, uh, somebody asked if I still plan to do my live broadcast during the eclipse on Monday. Yes, between noon and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, I will be live on the air throughout the eclipse. Even though I do not expect to get a great view of it from my location, I'm going to be live and anybody who sends me photographs that they obtain during that period of time, I will be showing those live on the air. So I hope that a lot, some people out there will be in the line of totality, will be out there and ready to show me whatever they find so I can get that live on air as quickly as possible. All right, here we go. Let me just bring this up a little bigger from RT News today. Apocalyptic cloud haunts Brazilian towns. I don't need to see the video, but let's look at these pictures. I don't know what you guys make of this image out there. And I'll put the link in the description box below so you can check these out for yourself. I am at a loss. I just came by this information about 20 minutes ago from a friend who emailed it to me. And I plan to look into what exactly this might be because there is no way that I believe this is a naturally occurring cloud of any variety. And there are some more interesting photos here. Take a look at them yourself. And look at the video. This to me looks like the entry of a comet or a meteorite that may be burned up in orbit prior to striking ground. And we know that there has been an increase in meteorite activity over the last several years as the Nibiru system begins to draw closer and closer to our planet. And just some more, a few more pictures. Very, very interesting. Very frightening to even to look at these. I suspect that more information... Oh, this happened in Brazil, by the way. And right now, there are pictures showing up on Twitter and on social media, but not very much factual data as to what this anomaly is. And I am hoping very quickly, we, you and me together, and everyone else out there can put some info together figuring out what exactly this is. All right. I'm going to close it now. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Again, my live broadcast for tonight is canceled. No, nothing is wrong with me. I'm fine. I have to go meet uh, a source, hoping that he will provide me with some information on a, a story I've been working on, and that's it. But there's no problem with me. Thanks a lot. Mike from Nibiru News signing out. Ciao for now.